Hi everyone and thanks for joining this video on how to create a custom app ID. Uh, today we're going to cover a couple of things, um, but it should be uh, brief but uh, interesting. We're going to cover how to create a custom app ID of course, but the, the first item on the agenda is what is a custom app ID? We'll define what that is and then second after that we'll look at um, a couple of quick tools that we'll use to, to do that, how we create that, and then we'll do a live demonstration of how that actually works. Okay, so uh, let's just go ahead and get started. So what is a custom app ID? Uh, a custom app ID allows us really to do two things. Uh, the first is to create pattern-based signatures for traffic that doesn't match any of our existing application signatures. So uh, this might include things like intranet applications or custom homegrown applications, things like that. Uh, so it's often useful to be able to control these things or sometimes it could be internet based applications that we just don't have an app ID for and you want to create something specific just for that. Okay, So that's uh, one. The other is that uh, oftentimes we want to create an app ID for use in an app ID override rule. So an app override rule uh, is where we could identify traffic that might otherwise be unknown. Uh, so we can identify things like unknown TCP or unknown UDP. We can get that application a name. Uh, the other is again when we're doing doing internet traffic or or homegrown applications that might be identified as something else. Might be just plainly identified as web browsing uh, yet it's our intranet server or something like that. So um, so those are those are the primary reasons uh, that we would use an app ID and and um, and what the custom app ID is for. The next question that comes up, of course, is how do we create these custom app ID signatures? Well, there's three easy steps to this. Um, the first is that we have to look at the packets. The second is really identifying traffic patterns within those packets. And then finally, building the signature. So in the first step, looking at the packets, we need to use a packet capture tool or an HTTP analyzer, uh, things like Wireshark, or uh, I'll show you a tool that I'm going to use called HTTP Fox. There's another tool called HTTP Watch. From here, we need to identify traffic patterns using things like port and protocol. Um, is, you know, is it TCP port 80 or 443 or some other port? The uh, decoder context, so is it using HTTP, FTP, some other protocol? We need to identify that. And then finally, we need to identify a pattern. And one thing to note is the patterns need to be seven bytes or longer. Okay, shorter patterns won't work. You need to identify a full seven bytes. All right. Usually pretty simple. Uh, identifying shorter patterns really just contributes to false positives. So uh, from here, once we have those things, then you just build your signature. In the Objects tab under the Applications section, uh, you just click add to Add, and we'll go through that as well. One other thing that we won't demonstrate here, but you do also have the capability to create uh, custom vulnerability signatures. This is very similar to the App ID engine, so I won't uh, I won't go through it. But the same tools are available. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and build one, okay? And we'll uh, we'll get started on that now. Uh, so a couple of quick things. Um, I am using a very simple policy base at the moment. I'm logged into this firewall. It just really has these three rules: allow, outbound. Uh, the first rule allows me to manage the device, and then my last rule, which is a catch-all. Okay, I'm allowing everything outbound. What I'm going to do is we're going to go to an application called uh, RapidGator.net here. A RapidGator is a web-based file sharing utility we're going to build a custom app ID for. And this one ordinarily would just get identified as web browsing. But what this particular website allows you to do is upload files similar to Mega Upload or, or RapidShare, where the files then become publicly available. Um, and it has, of course, uh, connotations to it, such as things like um, illegal file sharing and, and loss of intellectual property, things like that. So um, again, first thing is we have to uh, identify, we have to see the packets. So we have to, to look at those. There are several tools for doing this. Um, I'm going to use a tool called HTTP Fox. Oops, this is a plugin for, uh, or an add-on for, for Firefox. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, there's also a similar tool called HTTP Watch. If you have $395 laying around, you can do this tool. Um, but I'm going to use HTTP Fox because it's free. Uh, to give you a quick demonstration of what HTTP Fox does, let me bring it up right here. Let me, oops, ah, sorry. Let me bring it up here. We'll clear this. Uh, if I go to Google, uh, let me start the tool. So it starts capturing. If I go to Google here, uh, you will see a summary down here in the window of all the objects that are being loaded. Um, so things like this will show us information about the 
I'll stop the capture, about the host that we went to, the server responses, the cookies, and other header information that we might use then to uh, leverage a, a pattern match, okay? So great, so I'm gonna clear this, and let's go to Rapid Gator, okay? So I have come here to Rapid Gator. Um, I can come here freshly if I like. Uh, oh, I forgot to start my tool here, let's do it again. Okay, let's go to Rapid Gator. There it is. Uh, we will see information being sent to and from Rapid Gator. Uh, so we'll see this, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to upload a file to Rapid Gator, and I want to capture patterns or look for patterns within that upload to be able to, to maybe prevent that from happening in the future. So um, we're going to build two signatures, one around Rapid Gator in general, and then a second around actually uploading to Rapid Gator. So uh, I've already captured enough data to be able to write the signature for Rapid Gator, and then the second one is going to be me uploading a file. So what I'll do is I'll check this box, I'll say upload a file, uh, I need to choose a file, uh, we can choose a file in here somewhere, how about this one, we'll say open, uh, it uploads the file, say upload, and there it goes, and now it finished. Uh, so you'll see when I hit the upload button, you'll see this uh, this post happened. I'm going to stop this right now. That's the one I want to look at. Okay, um, let's close this. Uh, so great. So I see when I go to regular Rapid Gator, you'll see that it goes to rapidgator.net and a bunch of other objects. But when I post, when I upload a file, you'll see there's a post and this goes to a some server name dot rapidgator.net. There's some other patterns in here I could grab out of the query string or things like that, but I'm really for this rule I'm gonna make it simple and just go just monitor for this host name. So the pattern match that I'm gonna look for is general rapidgator.net is just gonna be this host header. And then if I'm posting uh, then for uploading, meaning I'm gonna look for a post to something to a server name dot rapidgator.net. Okay, great. So let's go build that. Okay, so let's go back to our PA two hundred. And uh, I'm gonna come over here. Let's uh, actually close this. I've got a little more space to work with. I'll go to the Objects tab. And I'll go to Applications. And this will bring me to the Applications window. I'm gonna click, click Add to add a new application. I'm gonna wind up adding two. We're gonna add, add the first one called Rapid Gator and the next one's gonna be Rapid Gator Upload. And the properties, I'll select General Internet. Uh, this is file sharing. Technology is browser-based. I could choose some characteristics, but I'll skip that for now. Um, in Advanced, I will click Port. And I'm gonna define the port number that I want, in this case, TCP port 80, because this was an HTTP-based application. I could put in TCP port 443. If it was, H if it was an SSL-based application, I could choose one of these other characteristics uh, to look for, but this is good for now. I can also enable scanning here if I want to scan with security profiles, things like scanning for file types or viruses or spyware, stuff like that. Okay, I'm going to skip that for now as well. I'm going to come over here to click signatures, and this is the fun part. This is where we add a signature, Rapid Gator, and we will add, oh, I'm sorry, uh, then you click to add a condition down here at the bottom. I'll cancel to show you that again. We click to add a condition. It could be an AND condition or an OR condition. Uh, I'm going to click the AND condition. We can leave this scope as transaction and ordered condition match. There's only going to be one condition. Uh, so I select that. I choose a pattern match. The context that I'm going to look for is, um, I, I, this is where I would choose what sort of uh, protocol I'm looking for. In this case, we're looking for HTTP, but you'll see there's a lot of different protocols in here that we're monitoring. Um, so I'm going to look for HTTP request host header, okay? And then I will put in rapidgator.net. So this pattern, again, needs to be bigger than seven bytes. The little backslash dot, that means a literal dot and not a wild card. Uh, that's a regex uh, function there. Okay, so there's that one. So I'm looking for any pattern uh, that matches rapidgator.net in the host header. Perfect. Okay, that's for rapidgator. I'll say okay. Now great. Now the other one that I want to control is going to be the Rapid Gator upload. So to do that, so you'll see this now appears there. I'm going to add one more and I'm going to make a new signature, Rapid Gator dash upload. And category general internet, subcategory 
uh, file sharing, technology, browser-based, advanced, same as before, TCP port 80, and then signatures. And here, the signature is going to be slightly different. Uh, I, I'll do the same as I did before where I select a, a condition. I select pattern match, but in this case, I'm going to do an HTTP, um, oh, I have to do the HTTP request host header again. But this one's gonna be a little bit different I'm, because I'm looking for that, that host name dot rapidgator.net. So I'm looking for that server name dot rapidgator dot, oops, dot net. And I'm going to add something called a qualifier down here at the bottom, okay? The qualifier, allows me to specify what HTTP method I'm looking for. And in this particular case, we're looking for an HTTP post. So I'm gonna come in here, I'll say post HTTP method, post, I'll say okay. So now we're saying that it has to have a host header that has dot rapidgator dot net in it, and it has to be a post. Okay, I'll say okay, I'll say okay, I'll say okay. And now I have my two signatures in there. And now, Let's do a commit. Okay. And we will give this one second to commit. And as soon as uh, the commit is completed, then we should be able to test our RapidGator application again. And we should see that appear in the logs now. Okay, so let's give that a shot. Just one second. One other thing I'll mention too about um, about app ID database changes. Uh, any database change you make with the custom app ID or custom vulnerability signatures forces a recompile of the entire database. Uh, so uh, this can take a little bit longer than your usual commit, but the next time you commit after that, the, it doesn't have to recompile, so it'll resume to normal. Okay, so our commit is complete, and now we're gonna go ahead and close this. Um, I'm gonna go over here to the monitor tab and we will uh, look for those applications. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a filter for application rapid gator. And you'll see that at the moment, I do not have any rapid gator in there, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, refresh this. And we will go ahead and try to upload our file again. Um, so if I do that, then, um, oops. I forgot, I gotta do this first. Upload files, choose a file, uh, and we'll choose some other random file here. Okay, upload. And there it goes. All right, um, so my upload is complete. And now, if we go back here, um, we should see Rapid Gator uh, and Rapid Gator Upload. Now, I could have gone ahead and blocked any of these files as well, or any of these applications. Oops. There's Rapid Gator Upload using, doing that file transfer. So I could have gone ahead and created a policy to block these applications. I won't do it just for the sake of time in this video, but there you go, that's how it works. I hope that made good sense. Um, there are lots of resources available as well. Uh, there are a lot of custom application signatures. Um, there are uh, custom vulnerability signature examples. There's tools in the admin guide, um, browser-based analyzers as well. So I'll try to link some of these in the notes below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will catch up with you next time on our next video.